visual effects play such an important role in movies and TV now, and the technology for them is just getting better and better. I think we're we're going for the big the big show here. We're again trying to bring this level of movie production, this level of of effects and of action and of stunts and everything, up to the level of what you'd see in a feature movie. We can't physically put Chris in the car in some of these precision, precision driving moments. We're talking like switchback roads in the south of France at 120 kilometers an hour, overtaking a Lamborghini that's going 100 kilometers an hour. Like very, very dangerous stuff. So, you know, you need people like Pascal and David who have been doing this for 10, 20 years um, to do this precision driving. So what we do is we shoot all the scenes and then we have something called a plate car. He had a, a, a special car that was basically designed and, and uh, built under his supervision that had cameras mounted all around you know this this particular car and uh, uh, he was really really uh, judicious about making sure that they they got good plates they've got lots of things shot in Paris and in Marseille and in Nice and on some of the motorways in Berlin so it really gives the show a sense of place. The show is taking place in these cities. Even though show, the show itself, the main unit now is here in southern Ontario. The VFX Play Car is a, um, a BMW 3 Series that we have rigged with five Sony F3 cameras. One of the most important things for us to do is to get background plates for all of these elaborate stunt sequences. So we film the scene with the Audi, uh, you know, with cranes and cameras all over the place. Then we take the Audi out and we put our plate car. Then we get the same guy who was driving the Audi to drive the play car. We'd run the entire thing through and then we quickly go back to our first position, undo a bunch of these, change the camera angle, bolt it down again, and then run it through again. So after each stunt sequence, we'll get 10 different angles. Here we are, mission control inside the car. We have a bunch of lines coming in to this monitor, each one attached to a different camera. And then from here, I can watch while the stunt is going on, what's going on in each of the cameras. The other thing that's, uh, that's a little bit different about this is this Canon 5D. And what this is, is it points at the driver. And it only points at the driver and it gives us a lot of information. The first thing it does is our lighting. When you go around a corner, the sun obviously doesn't follow you, it goes you know, it stays where it is, and the light on the driver rakes across him. Or he'll go into darkness and shadow when he's going through tr under trees, when he's going around corners in the south of France, going past buildings, all that sort of stuff. The light changes. And you can guess at what that looks like, or you can get reference and know exactly what it looks like. So when we get back to the green screen stage, we're going to be able to know exactly what we need to do with our interactive lighting. And then the other thing it gives us is, um, for Chris Vance, our, our actor who's playing Frank, he's going to know exactly how to drive these cars for these sequences. So we're going to have a monitor out front with this playing for him, so he's not going to be going like this all over the place. He, like Pascal told me, the, the stunt driver, is that it's just small movements. And that goes a long way for selling the stunt. Visual effects have really helped us uh, bring bigger stunts and bigger action to the show. And uh, we also use it occasionally for um, some replacements. Some, um, if we do wide shots in Toronto and we want to put Nice in the background, we'll do some, some um, scenic replacements in the background. So, because there are some things we can't do when we come to Europe. Most of the series takes place in France and Europe, but we're actually shooting a lot of it here in Toronto. So what we have to do is take uh, Toronto scenes and make it feel like Nice or make it feel like Marseille. The best research has been the trip to Europe that I took with the second unit crew prior to filming main unit here in Toronto. So I went and I think I came back with something like 25,000 photos um, and we're using all of these and I'm not kidding, we're using all of these to replace Toronto. The funny thing is, is Toronto doesn't really look like any parts of Europe. And you'd be surprised what a couple of putting a couple street signs in there will do, but um, there have been times where we've had to replace entire uh, walls, entire buildings, sometimes almost the entire frame where all we keep is, 
is the Audi. We did a rooftop parking garage, you know, as, just as a for instance, it was a high wide shot and it was just a, you know, an industrial sort of background that he completely replaced and put comped uh, Nice cleanly into the shot. And it's those sorts of things that are really going to, you know, sell the fact that Transporter is set in the south of France. So we had a scene at a, a Swiss border station, so we found an appropriate place that was in the country on the outskirts of Toronto. And so Brendan could come in and said, do you need some mountains? Yes, I do, you know? And poof, you know, like magic, there are mountains in the shot. And he's there on set to help us, you know, find the right lens and the camera placement. But uh, when you see the final effect, it's quite seamless. There's nothing fantastical about Transporter. There's no big fantasy elements. It's, we're just striving for photorealism. There's a weird sliding scale because they want feature film effects, but we have to do it on a TV timeline. So that's, that's where the give and take happens. So once you go into CGI, like computer generated images, it automatically doubles or triples your time because more people have to work on it and it slows it down. So we try and keep it out of the CGI world and just deal with manipulating the images and compositing and matte painting in order to keep our timelines down so that we can spend the time working on the shots and making them great as opposed to building them. Getting the shot to the 80% level is easy. Probably takes 20% of the time. Getting the shot to the 100% from 80% to 100 is really hard. That's where your high, high level compositors like we have come in handy because, um, you know, there's always a feeling of, yeah, it doesn't quite feel right, I don't know what it is, and then you just have to keep going at it and going at it and eventually you'll find it. How much VFX are the audience going to see? Hopefully nothing. Hopefully nothing. Hopefully they believe that it's all shot in Europe and that Chris is driving. That, that is our main goal and that is the one thing that we've stuck to the whole way through.